This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Thank you so much for coming. For me, it's a very big and important opportunity to find a group of people that desire to learn about secrets of essence of our life and there are many many ways that are out there for people to 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 try to learn by but the wisdom of Kabbalah is an inner wisdom that been given to human beings and especially we will try to learn that amazing wisdom that been given to us in the by the way of the tradition that passed the message of the Jewish nation, of the holy nation of Israel. The nation of Israel been blessed in a special gift that in that generation we were worthy, totally humble to receive the great amount of light that had been given to us by the Creator through that righteous man Moses. And he delivered the will of Hashem. Now it's very important for us to know that the wisdom of Hashem, of the Creator, that had been given to us, been given in many, many floors, in many, many levels, in many, many layers. And there are ones that are deeper than others. And it doesn't make one better than the second. Just every soul must find the real channel that through that channel it will find comfort and satisfaction from the learning. And why is it so important? Because a person will not make another step and will sacrifice more and will put more effort unless he will enjoy his learning. And many of us are in the aspect that is called Baalei Tshuva, are people that decided to make a path toward the Creator and to find faith in their life. And they don't really have a background of traditional Judaism in their past or for their families. And still their souls are very, very holy and they desire inner secrets that supposed to be given only in, a, in, a, in silent, in closed doors. But those souls feel the passion and the desire to run toward the fire and they're not afraid from all kinds of risks. And those are very unique souls that have that passion inside of them to seek for the truth, to find the answer already, to remove and to break all obstacles, all walls that are separating us from heaven, that we feel that exist inside of ourselves. There are many, 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 many books of Kabbalah that we can learn from. There were many righteous people that guided us and taught us secrets of Kabbalah. Some of them are theoretics and some of them are practical. Some of them are understandable and some of them, like we said before, been given from one righteous old man to his student only after 80 years of checking if he's worthy or not in codes and in hints that we even might not be able to interpret and to understand. So for that, again, we need to find a way that will inspire us and will lit that flame of fire inside of ourselves. I'm sharing those thoughts with you because 
those were the thoughts that came to my mind when Jeff asked me to come and to speak about the secret of Kabbalah. Now I asked myself from which book I'm going to read, from on, on which topic I'm, I'm going to open. So first of all we're thanking Hashem, the Creator, that He invited us for a few lectures and it will be a series of lectures. And with that privilege from heaven we'll have the ability to touch at least few topics and to discuss few big and deep issues that concern to our lives. So there is a very deep and amazing book that is called Otsar Midrashim. In that book Otsar Midrashim that you can see there are many many ancient handwrites that passed from one generation to the next. One of those, um, in one of the chapters, is bringing the person that, that, that um, gathered all of those amazing articles in that book, he brings an article that calls Heichalot. Heichalot are places, floors, levels in heaven. I made a picture, uh, I, I gave you that. This is a picture that I took from that book and it's describing the seven floors that in every floor a person can experience the Creator. The righteous people, they were meditating and mentioning holy names of the Creator with the right pure intention and they were climbing from one floor to the next from one level to the one that is above it and in this Midrash that is called Midrash Eichalot there are many many stories that are telling us about that main righteous man that shared that wisdom his name was Rabbi Nechunia ben Hakana Rabbi Nechunia ben Hakana, he was a righteous man in the generation of the Holy Temple of Beit HaMikdash and he was teaching the Tanaim. Tanaim were very very huge like Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and Rabbi Yonatan ben Uziel that is called Yonatan ben Uziel, Rabbi Yoch, Rabban Yochanan ben Zakai and more of those ancient righteous people that are known as Kabbalistics. They known as people that were climbing to the divine field of apples, to heaven. They had an access and ability to climb in the worlds while meditating and calling Hashem in His names. Now, in that book and in many other books there are many many warnings on which names to use which names we allow to call Hashem with and which we never allow to but there is an amazing amazing tale inside that book that is describing that holy moments of those righteous people sitting on the floor inside the Azara of Bet Amikdash, of the Holy Temple. All of them are sitting on the ground surrounding Nechunia ben Hakana. Nechunia ben Hakana, he was that righteous man that wrote for us the prayer Ana Bechoach, that probably most of us heard about that prayer. It's a very important and known prayer. Every letter of that prayer that is built is building like few words in a combination builds a word but actually every word of that prayer is hinting and sim symbol symbolizing for us another name from the names of the creator and together that prayer is a very powerful prayer because while we're asking from Hashem while using those words 
אנא בכוח גדולת ימיניך תתיר צרורה. We're asking, it's a certain request, please, by the great power of, of your hand, untie the, the, our, our, our um, bundle and save us. While asking, we're actually moving and shaking holy branches that are calling Hashem in divine and very high names that we're not even aware of and we don't know how to use. But that righteous man, he knew how to put those high, high intentions into simple words of prayer that we can use and calling the Creator from our hearts. Because sometimes when we're trying to learn secrets of Kabbalah, we're finding ourselves with deep information, with deep understandings and wisdom that we don't know how to use in life. We don't know what to do with that information. So, that righteous man, Nechunia ben Hakana, he had that ability to explain his spiritual deep understandings and to deliver it to his students in a way that will be useful for them to use and, and, and to enjoy from that wisdom. So, Rabbi Nechunia ben Hakana is standing in the temple with his students surrounding him and he is climbing the world. He's climbing from one world to the next and the names of the worlds are written here in the holy language and he is mentioning and it's written I can read for you a little bit from that book if you're willing to hear and he is calling Hashem in his names and he's climbing from one world one level to the next now as you can see the worlds here the floors and the levels are are um, um, illustrated in in squares that one of them is inner than his friend than the fir the one that was before and then the higher one like a pyramid is building on top of it and is a little bit smaller but actually higher than it you see that that shape is in the shape of a pyramid and it's helping us to climb from one level to the next but the most important thing for us to understand from this amazing shape is that the highest one of them all is also the most inner one. It might look tiny, it might look small, but it's the highest one of them all. And why? Because the Creator, He wants us all to have an access to Him. That's why even if you have amazing opportunities outside, out there in the world, and you're looking and it seems so interesting, and the options are so wide and so attempting, there are inner and deeper and higher ways to find the truth within. And this is the main secret of Kabbalah that a person will understand that he is not learning an external wisdom. He is buying tools to find his inner self through that learning. And that's why meditation and inner observation and working on our self-awareness is so important and needed. And this is why we've been warned by those righteous people to purify ourselves so well and so much before of accessing, coming closer to the wisdom of truth. A person must focus his mind. A person must work on his awareness to control his thoughts in a way that he will not going to be distracted by foreign thoughts. Because when you're handling 
such high and gentle concepts, you must protect yourself and connect and tie yourself to your inner spiritual roots that you won't be damaged. That's why a person, like we said, because when it's getting inner and inner, the space becomes shorter and smaller and thinner, and that's why a little bit more risky than, than set the floor of before. But it's still higher, and our souls desire those heights, and for a reason. And I'll tell you why. The Kabbalah is calling our souls crying souls, crying water. When the Creator created the world, so before of creation, the world was not physical at all. All the existence was only spiritual. There was only the endless, Ensof Baruch Hu, the blessed endless. Now, when He was here and there was nothing else except of Him in the world, in the eternity, so there were no dividings and there were, there were no separations, no limitations at all. And when He wanted to create us, to send His children for a huge and amazing mission of finding Him through the darkness, He had to move Himself to the sides. And He created an empty space within Himself. He moved Himself to the sides and created an empty, dark space that no one understands anything about that space and beyond. We don't have no access, not to that space and not to what that was there, Mikedem before of that time, before of creation. Because now we are talking and discussing a time that is before the time of creation, before creation of time. We're talking about a certain existence that we cannot grab. Why? Because our souls came down from the sea of souls, from the eternal world, and they had to go through the husks and the physical curtains that stuck us into a physical shape and we are now prisoners inside the physical world. If it's our physical body and if it's our needs in the physical world and if it's the physical world that is surrounding us includes the sky that are physical that are blocking from us the access to see the divine worlds of eternity. So today, even if we will try by the most progress devices to look toward the sky and to look toward the space, we won't find the Creator over there because He Himself created a, a, a curtain, a, 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 a curtain that is blocking our ability to find Him in an external way. Even if we will look in the brightest day to, toward the most open view, the, the horizon, we won't be able to see eternity. Why? Because He created a curtain that is blocking our ability to see the infinity. But when we are closing our eyes and we're focusing in our spiritual roots that are within ourselves, after cleaning ourselves mentally, emotionally, purifying our thoughts and aiming the power of our soul to that purpose of finding Him connecting ourselves to the truth, only then we can experience real spirituality. To see a fantastic view or to enjoy an amazing, quiet, calming day or lunch 
or, or an occasion with best friends in the world will never be considered spiritual. Maybe emotional uplifting, maybe inspiring, maybe arousing the thoughts, but not spiritual. Spirituality is not part of the physicality, is the opposite. So everything that you see outside is coming from those curtains, is coming from those husks that their purpose, that the purpose of their creation was to block our ability to access to infinity by them. They are here to block the light. That we will wake up to look for Him from our inside. And this is why we are being called crying water. Because before of creation, we were one with the Creator. And in a certain moment, He called us and sent us because He found us worthy to go into a hard, huge mission, risky and dangerous mission of shichecha, for forgetness. Yes, there is a word shichecha to for to forget, to forget, forget what? Forgetfulness. Great, whatever makes sense. He sent us to this world to forget where we came from, who we really are. And we, by the goodness of the nature of our creation, because of who that we really are in the divine secret of our souls that are coming from the divine root in heaven, because of that, and He was counting on us to remind ourselves that we are here only in a temporary way, for a limited time, on a mission, with a purpose and a divine cause, to find Him, recognize Him, and to wake up all of our siblings, all of our beloved sisters and brothers, to remember ourselves again in who we really are and what the mission is all about. That's the mission! And why we're crying? Because of the painful separation. A mother can never forget her child. A child can never forget his parents. Never, ever in the world. No matter how satisfying his life will be, he will always miss his parents. The Creator cannot forget us and our souls cannot forget Him. This is why our souls are being compared to crying water. Because we cannot understand how can it be that our beloved Father sent us to this hard, seems to be cruel mission to forget our nature, our goodness, and His greatness. But when we are understanding that He gave every single one of us an inner channel to reconnect ourselves to Him from within, then we're not lost anymore. And that is the purpose why the secret of Kabbalah been given to us, even to this generation. That we, by the power of our souls, will climb back in that Jacob letter that his beginning is in this physicality, in the ground, but his top, his head, is over there in heaven. And the way to climb in that ladder is to understand that you, like Jacob, is even stronger than an angel. And why you're stronger than an angel? He saw that angels are climbing and going down in that ladder. And he 
when he was fighting Jacob, when he was fighting the biggest, largest angel of, the, of them all, the strongest one of them all, he had the power to stand and to strengthen himself and to find inner powers that gave him the ability to overpower that evil inclination, the angel of death. He found that power inside of himself only because of the nature of his creation. And then Hashem called Jacob Yisrael. Why he called him Yisrael? Because he explained to him, you found the power to be in the same place with that angel and to overpower him, to win. Because of the power of his creation because of who that we really are in the secret of our creation. And we must remind ourselves of our huge, fantastic potential, that there are no limits to our ability. And because the, the Creator, He knows us, and He was the one that chose us, and sent us like special forces, special units, to go into the area of the enemy and to fight over there in the darkness between the shades and the husks where you don't have control of spirituality and you don't have control of purity and the worst and opposite impurity controls the world and you see that fake leaders are running the systems, liars, cruel people, murderers, and worse than that even, are possessing and ruling and distracting the thoughts of the holy souls from their purpose. But He, the Almighty, He knew that it's in our power and that's why he sent and delivered the message even to our generation. Even to a generation that people that are waking up to serve the Creator and to find Him and are desiring, thirsty, to learn the secrets and wisdom of truth don't have no background, don't have no tradition, are coming from places that never been heard before don't have no clue even why they themselves are desiring the truth with such a great huge desire. Don't know why. Just like flies flying toward the fire. I remember myself as a child that once I saw a fly flying to a bonfire and I was thinking to myself, is he crazy? What is he doing? Like, it's hot. You're dying. You're dead. That's it. And then I said to myself, why do you think that you know so much? Okay, so his body now became ashes. But do you know what really happened to him? I had that thought as a child. Do you understand what happened to that soul of that fly that just reached the core of the fire? Do you know really what happened to him when he reunited with the desire of his life, the light? Do you know what happened to him when he died? No. You just have self-pity, self-mercy on your own body because you're afraid of the fire, afraid of the pain. But those huge souls that got rid of their... Um, their their weakness of leaning on physicality and set their mind to lean only on the soul of, 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 of the first man and, and Eve, connecting themselves to the roots of their spirituality, becoming one with the Creator, those souls are not experiencing the physical pain in the same way anymore. They don't care so much about their physicality anymore. And they have now, from that moment and on, an access to a whole world of spiritual satisfaction and divine joy. 
in ways that are unique to every individual and different from the next. Things that you can experience in your spiritual experiences will be seen only to you. The Creator will deliver a certain message and joy and satisfaction to you that He will never share with your friend. That's why also there are things that when you're experiencing them, you should keep them to yourself. And some of those things you need to share. What you need to share, not what that you gained for yourself, what that you know that can help someone else to find his way to the roots of his soul. Now, in every world and world, and those worlds being described to us, for us to know how to deal with our life. In every world that Rabbi Nechunia ben Hakana is reaching, that he's climbing to that wall, to that world, to that floor, to the next level, he is finding himself surrounded with guards, with dangerous warriors, running and riding on horses that are, in one level, are described like smoke and in the next one like fire and in the third one got lightnings coming out of their eyes and from one floor to the next they're getting more dangerous and 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 it's it's the challenge and the test of a righteous person that is trying to climb in the world that is trying to climb from one level to the next is getting harder and harder and while being terrified and threatened by those guards that are coming to protect the honor of the Almighty that is sitting on his throne of honor in that level in that stage somewhere over there when they're coming to attack and to prevent from that righteous person to go deeper and inner, to visualize and to see with his eyes the shape that is above shape, the figure that is above figure of the Almighty sitting with his honor on the throne of honor, when he's being threatened, he needs to remember certain holy names and to mention them. He will have to give some answers to some questions. And they're questioning him not because they want him to fail, just because that this is their job to prevent and to hold back those ones that are not worthy yet to stand in front of the king of all kings. Not because that he doesn't want to see his children, just because that this sight can damage them. When we are being rejected in life from the spiritual achievements that we desire, we must put that conclusion and understanding into our awareness. The reason that I've been rejected until now was only for one cause, to prepare me in a better way to help me to build and stabilize my vessels that they will be worthy and capable of containing <coughs> the spiritual bounty of the next level. If I will reach the next level without the proper vessels, I will crack. It will break me. That's why it's better for me to wait and to cry during my nights and my days can be harder than hell and I can be standing, finding myself standing, tearing eyes, filling buckets with, with salty tears, crying and screaming to the Creator to help me, to redeem me from the darkness that is surrounding me. But I must remind myself in those hard hours that the reason that I'm being rejected now is only because that the Creator wants me, 
with him in a way that will be healthy for me and good for me that I will enjoy his warmth and not gonna be burnt in his fire that it's an eating fire there are different kinds of flames of fire and the Creator's fire is such a hot fire that is eating and digesting and melting everything that is surrounding it. So if you're there and you have in the thinnest aspect of them all, in 1% of your being, some kind of selfishness, a selfish will, so you will be burnt in that fire and no one wants that to happen that's why we need to accept the shames and insultings and challenges and difficulties of our life as a gift from the almighty that is supervising on our lives in a very in a perfect way giving to us the exact amounts that are needed and required for us to complete the vessels now when you climb in those worlds it's an experience that we all experiencing in our lives it doesn't have to be in that divine meditation it can be in your office it can be with your friends with your beloved ones in your house the only question is where your mind is while working, while hugging, while talking, while eating. The real righteous ones never moved the thought of Hashem from their mind. Like that King David is telling us, Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. I imagine the name of Hashem in front of my eyes always always he was walking with the name of God in front of his eyes not because that the name of God was walking with him only because that he was forcing his thoughts not to be distracted by the temptations of the physical world and he was focusing all the powers of his soul and his emotions to that ancient memory the one and we if we will hold ourselves to that purpose today reminding ourselves of the messages and the wisdom that we as holy souls been taught until today you don't need to know what that I know it's not needed for you you have your own challenges in life and the wisdom that the Creator provided you until today that is the wisdom that is required for you for the now, for the present. When you want to unite yourself with the Divine Creator, you need to connect yourself to Him in the highest name that been given to us until today. It's the name of God that is being written in four letters of Havaya, Yud K Vav K. And the meaning of that name, that this is one of the names that we're not allowed to pronounce and mention with our mouths. Only in our thoughts we're allowed to think about that great and holy name. We're not allowed to mention it even in English and even in different languages because just the intention of mentioning that name is risky and dangerous and can damage our future progress so in our minds we must remember the name of Hashem I have a friend that lived in Manhattan for a few years in his life in Soho and he told me that after hearing one of my classes that I was talking about King David walking with the name of Hashem in his mind he decided at night to go in the streets and thinking about the Creator and he was walking thinking about the name of Hashem Barach, and he experienced many miracles while thinking about the holy name here in the streets of Manhattan 
things that happen to him will make you sh shake from fear, from understanding how powerful is the, the, the power and the potential of a soul, the desire, closeness to Hashem, to the Creator. Now, if we want to connect ourselves to the Creator, like we said, we must connect ourselves to Him by the names that have been given to us. And the highest name of them all is the name of Hashem that is being written in Yud K Vav K. That's the name that represents the goodness and grace and kindness of the Creator to, to His world, to His creation. And there is a simple meaning to this name in the holy ancient language. And it's, it will happen. I will be there with you. That's the meaning of his name. When you think about the meaning of that word, that it's actually the name of Hashem, you're thinking about a word that actually express the intention of, I will be there with you. That's his name. When we there is a way to use that word in the holy language without calling Hashem. Like we're using those letters in a different combination or the, or, or the, the vowels will be a little bit different. You can say something that will express the idea of who Hashem really is for us. He is the one that is telling us I'm going to be there for you. Now, when you want to connect yourself to Him, you're connecting yourself to Him in the present. Because we know that the past doesn't really exist. There is no past, only thoughts in your mind that we're calling them memories. But you cannot go to the past. There is no past. It passed already. And the future is also something that is not... Uh, available for us it's only our hopes and our thoughts and our dreams and really there is no reality in the future because the future does not exist we will see and when we will see it in the future we will see and experience it in the present also the past that we were talking about earlier when we were there we were there in the present the real existence that we have in this world is only in the present. The past is our imagination and interpretations, and the future is our imaginations and hopes and dreams. And the only reality that really exists is the now, here and now, no matter where you are. In that place, you should connect yourself to the one that is telling you, I'm going to be there for you. Don't worry. That's the highest way to connect ourselves while using the name of Hashem. So I can suggest every single person the desire to find Hashem, to meditate on that, to find time. And this is the ancient way that the real righteous people, that their mind was deep in the wisdom of Kabbalah, that is exactly what they were doing. Some of them were wearing white clothes, and some of them were going to quiet places like the desert, like the forest. Some of them were closing themselves in their chambers, in their rooms. It's written on King David that he was covering himself in the blanket and hiding in his bed. And that's how he was calling and meditating to Hashem. There are many, many ways and every one of us must find the one that will fit to the roots of his soul and to find that quiet time and to meditate on that aspect of knowing Hashem like that in the present. And not to mention the name of Hashem, just to think it. 
to describe and to imagine the letters of Hashem. If you feel that for you they're coming in shape of fire, so in fire. And if it's coming in water, so for you is coming in water. And if for you it's coming clear like the air, so for you it's clear and you can see through it. And the Creator Himself said to us, Beyad Nevi'im Adameh, to the prophets, I will show what I want them to know. He will use the power of your imagination if you will aim your heart with a pure intention and He will guide you and show you the path that you must walk in. But you need to believe in yourself for that. That's why in the beginning of our conversation I mentioned the fact that no matter what this world will offer you, the inside is higher and deeper and will connect you to higher levels and to the heights, to the highest level of them all. To know Hashem in all of His forms, in all the way that He's dressing and covering Himself in this world. And for that we must focus and meditate to use that divine tool that been given to us by those righteous people that sacrificed themselves and fought for our generation to deliver that message that every single one of us can find the truth within inside of himself Elijah the prophet in his book that been written by the righteous man named Anan, Rav Anan, he said over there that the sky and the earth will testify that what that he is about to say is perfect truth. That no matter who you are, if you're Jewish or if you are not a Jew, you're from a different nation. If you are a man or a woman, if you're a free person or a slave, no matter who you are, the Divine Spirit will hover above you. You'll have an access to the ancient archives of wisdom of the Creator corresponding to how good your actions will be to how kind you will be, how nice you will be, how polite you will be, how generous you will be, how much love you will express, how much kindness you will express, how much grace and wisdom you will share. Who you will be will set your spiritual level and not people's opinion and not people's guidings. Even huge people can drown in the darkness, in the flood of negativity, sadness and bad attributes of this generation. There are more than 50 kinds of leprosy and impurity in this world today. Even the highest mountains were covered with water in the days of the flood. Even some of the righteous ones in this generation are covered with impure thoughts. We're not saying everyone. We're just saying that we cannot count on an external source. We must connect ourselves from within to the one that is communicating with us from the first day that we came to this world. As a child you experienced faith. As a child, you had someone that you believed in, that you had faith and trust in Him, that you hoped for Him to reveal Himself, to redeem you, to support you, to heal you, to answer your dreams and your hopes. All your trust you need to put on Him. This is Hashem. This is the Creator. The one that gives life to your soul from within. The one that is sending you messages in your dreams, when you're thinking. The one that makes all this puzzle come to be one piece. That one that is supervising your life and showing to you that He's with you, that you are important, 
that He chose you to communicate with you and to teach you His secrets. And for that you must believe in yourself that you are great and amazing and important in the eyes of the Almighty. And if He chose you, every single one of us, no matter who we are, to see His face in a way, to recognize Him in some aspects, it's because of His unconditional love to us, not because we're worthy, not because we're pure, not because we are righteous, just because that His love is a never-ending love. Love that not depends in actions. Love that depends only in the intention of your heart, in the pure desire of your crying soul that is hoping and yearning and crying and screaming to find the truth that is not willing to back off and to give up on mercy. Now, like we said before, to learn Kabbalah, it's a deep issue. And I'm willing to stand and speak for hours. You can ask my wife, she will testify. She can cook for days and I can talk and talk and talk and nothing is stopping me. It's a problem, we're working on it. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Kabbalah is a deep, 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 deep subject and we will try in those conversations in some of them to learn and I will explain certain aspects and issues that are important and required and in some of our meetings we will try to answer some of your deep questions so you can think about those issues that we were talking and you can write them down and you can think about them, you can pray on those and meditate on those. And Bezat Hashem, with help from heaven, I will be able to provide a good answer to your questions and to your thoughts. Now, some guidings for you for the future. Le'olam yilmad adam b'makom shelibo chafetz. A person must learn in a place that his heart feel satisfaction that he desired to learn in that place and we're not talking about synagogues or institutes or places we're talking even about books even about topics and chapters we're talking about the things that are arousing your inner desire to learn more you need to count on your inner voice and to keep on walking in the direction that you are being guided from within to walk in. You must count on your intuition and to walk and continue walking toward the truth in your way, in your special and unique way, because that way is not your way. This is the way that the Creator chose for you to expose, to uncover Himself to you for a reason. Fit to your vessels, to your mind abilities, to your emotional and, and, and sensitivity, to your emotional abilities and to your senses. And He knows who you are and what your background is and what happened with you all your history and more than you know lifetimes and source of your soul in the divine root in heaven before creation those are things that gave him the understanding to know exactly how to create you and to what to desire you to to open your eyes to which directions he is the one that knows all and he is guiding you how you will know if you're walking in the right path or in the wrong how you will know because we all made many mistakes in our lives it's written Pikudei Hashem Yesharim Mesamchei Lev when you walk in the straight path means the right path it will bring joy to your life when you feel trapped and threatened and forced to do certain things this is a warning light 
warning sign for you don't continue in that path if you feel stressed if you feel forced if you feel that someone wants something from you something that you're not willing to give this is a bad sign it's a great sign for you to back up it's a bad sign to continue a relationship of learning from that source of information a person must be aware to his inner sensors because the creator installed inside of us amazing sensitive sensors to find and to sense the good from bad the truth from lie the light from darkness and he commanded us to choose life and why to command a person to choose life isn't it obvious you have a plate of amazing fantastic food or a gun to your head what's going to be your choice you must choose the food no you don't need to force me to that i know what to choose why hashem told us that we must choose life because sometimes life looks like death and sometimes death looks like life sometimes this world can confuse us this is why we must believe in our inner feelings and to count on our senses and to follow the light of our heart that is desiring good so when you feel good about it go for it and when you feel bad about it don't walk to that direction anymore stop stand it's better not to pray for a day it's better not to learn for a week it's better not to keep and whatever for a certain while until you will come back to yourself and do things out of love out of happiness out of understanding and self-awareness awareness to the real will of the creator from us as his children as his servants he wants us all to be healthy and wealthy and strong and powerful and successful and satisfied he doesn't want us to suffer all of the suffering and all of the sorrow are only blocking and increasing the challenge of us breaking that code and coming to the core of the truth to the source and reason and purpose of our creation we must not be distracted by the negativity and the darkness and the sadness of this physical world we must fight and rebel and insist to find the light and to believe in his existence and the challenge is getting harder in some hours and sometimes blowing your mind but the ones that walked in darkness in the end they saw a huge light the promise that is waiting for those ones that will ask for, for Him with a pure heart, with a pure intention, is more than we can imagine. Days of Mashiach are now, days of redemption are now. Today, while I was driving, you can see that on Facebook, on my page, on the Moshe Kasuto page, I made a video live. My son was videoing filming me while I was driving and I was explaining some Midrash from Yalkut Shimoni, an ancient handwrite that had been written that is describing the days before Mashiach will come. And I was talking about the news, what it goes on today in the news. And the Yalkut Shimoni is explaining that in the days before Mashiach will come, days of Mashiach, so the nations will fight there are going to be a huge war between the nations and the king of 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 persian of paras that's iran iran today will fight with the king of arabs that's arabia saudi arabia and then the king of saudi arabia will go and consult with the king of edom 
this is the President Trump that is the king of the nation that calls Edom today in our days. And there's gonna be a war and there's gonna be a big, big noise in the world and the children of Israel are gonna ask Hashem, they're gonna ask where we should go, what we should do. So I was explaining today, one hour ago, in that video live, on that new, I said, the news of today are old news that been heard by the prophet thousands of years ago. I'm finishing that video and we're checking after two minutes some of the comments that been written and someone is writing now Israel been, been attacked by Iran by 20 missiles to Ramat Golan. Now! One hour and a half ago! But nothing happened. And nothing happened. No one been injured. No one been hurt. Hashem is with us. But to understand, we're talking and we don't know what we're talking. I was not aware of that. Someone in the comments commented on my video. And then we checked the news and we saw really it happened. We don't understand what's going on under our noses. Yelkuchimoni, it's written. I, I, I will show you. It's written in Yelkuchimoni. Torah Samech, Torah 60 in Yelkuchimoni. Fantastic things are happening. And then, just for you to know, Hashem is answering the Jewish people. Am Israel are asking where we should go, what should we do, what should we do? And Hashem is asking, why are you afraid? Everything that I was doing, I was doing only for you. Now it's the time of your redemption. Your redemption is the wide world redemption. We are not being redeemed as a nation. We are being used by the Creator as a light to the nations. This is our mission. Our mission is not to be individuals, to keep a secret. We are here to tell the truth to the world, to uncover the desire of the Almighty that everyone gonna know Him and gonna call Him in His name. I'm blessing you all that all your prayers and holy desires will be answered from heaven immediately. That you will see wonders and experience miracles in your lives. And that you will take that advice, meditate on the name of Hashem while understanding His meaning. I will be there with you. That's the thought that you should walk with in the present. While you're spending your life, living your life, you need to know Hashem is telling you in His name, I will be there for you. Believe in yourself and you will see wonders. Amen. 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 We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.